Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem next greater element one. And I'm actually gonna be doing both solutions for this problem. So over here you can see that there is a follow-up for this. So there's gonna be kind of an n squared solution and then the more efficient one, which is pretty much big of n, where n is gonna be the size of the larger input array. But before we do that, let's actually understand what the problem is asking for. So first of all, the next greater element of some element in an array is defined as being the first greater element to the right of that element in the same array. So it's pretty intuitive, just like the name says. We're given two arrays, nums1 and nums2, where nums1 is actually a subset of the second array. And what the problem is asking for is a little bit tricky to understand. So if we were just given this array nums2 and we had to find the next greater element of every single value in this array, that's simple to understand. But what the problem is asking for is actually a little bit more complicated than that. So basically, since nums1 is a subset of nums2, we actually only want to find the next greater element of the values in this array that are also included in the first array. So we don't want to find the next greater element of every one of these. We only want to find the ones that are 4, 1, and 2. So 4, uh, 1, and 2. You can see that they don't even show up in the same order. So that's going to be a little bit annoying. And so the output that we return is, of course, going to be the same size as nums1. And the order of the values is going to be the same. So if we want to know the next greater element of 4, well, we look at our second array. 4 is over here. What's the next greater element of it? 2 is not greater than 4, and there's no other elements here. So 4 doesn't have a next greater element. So the default value that we do in this case is going to be negative 1. So we just put a negative 1 in the output. The next value is 1. What's the next greater element of 1? Well, looking at the next value, 3 is greater than 1, so that is the next greater element of 1. 4 is also greater than 1, but 3 is closer to 1 on the right side, so we use 3 in the output. For 2, uh, 2 doesn't have any elements to the right of it, so it doesn't have a next greater element. We can just put negative 1 there. So the brute force of this problem is not super crazy but it's a little challenging for an easy problem. So one way to approach this problem is to kind of just find the next greater element for every single one of these, because we know if we do that, we'll pretty much have what we're looking for, and then we can create the output. But at the same time, we could also skip the values we don't need to. In this case, three is not in the first array, so we don't need to find the next greater uh, element of three. So what I'm actually gonna do is convert the first array into a hash map where we're gonna be uh, mapping every single value in that array to the index that it shows up in in the same array. The reason we're gonna be doing that is because let's say we are iterating through each value in N2, so we have one. So first we would wanna know, does one even show up in the first array? Yes, it does. Okay, so we need to find the next greater element of one. Let's say we find it over here, three. Okay, we found the next greater element of one. So now we want to add that three to the output in our result. Well, where are we gonna add it in the result? Are we gonna add it here or here or here? Well, it depends. Where did one show up in the input array? It showed up over here at index one. So that's gonna be the same index we add it in the output. So that's why we need the hash map so that we know the index of every single value. And the hash map will also be very efficient for us to just look at this value and say, does it even show up in the first array? Yes or no, we can do that in O of one time. Okay, so we, we found that that's you know the next square element. And then we're just gonna basically repeat that for the rest of the array. So three, does it show up in N1? It does not, so we can skip it. Four, does it show up in N1? Yes, it does, so we can't skip it. And how are we gonna find the next square element? Well, pretty much we're gonna iterate through the entire array until we find a value that's greater than four, the first value that we find that's greater than four and then add it to the output. But in this case, we would iterate through it and see that it doesn't exist. So in that case, we could just add a negative one uh, in the same corresponding position. But we could also just initialize our result array with all negative ones so that we don't even you know, have to do that which is probably how I'm gonna handle it in the code. 
And then lastly for two, there's no other elements that come after two, so we'll just add a negative one here. So not super crazy, but the overall time complexity, if you kind of caught it, is gonna be n squared because for every single value in n2, we're potentially gonna have to iterate through the entire input array to find the next greater element, and we're gonna have to do that for every single value in the array in the worst case, so the time complexity is gonna be something like n squared, but technically, let's say the size of this array is m and the size of this array is n. Uh, technically, I think the time complexity is actually gonna be n times m because we're not finding the next square element for every value in this array. We're only doing that for every value in the first array. The memory complexity is going to be big O of M because we're gonna have a hash map for the first array and we're also kind of building the output as well. So now let me just show you the code really quickly and then we're gonna to get to the more complex solution but also the more efficient solution. Okay, so let me just walk you through the code really quickly. So like I said, this is gonna be our hash map. The way I'm initializing it is kind of, you know, some Python fancy stuff, but you don't have to do it this way. You can do it a traditional way if you want, but pretty much this is just taking every single value in nums1, mapping it to the index that it shows up in. Then we're having our result, which is an array of the same length of nums1. Initially, it's just gonna be all negative ones because we know that's kind of the default value. And then we're basically doing our nested for loops that I talked about. We're going through every value in nums2, the bigger array, but we're checking, does that value even show up in nums1? If it does not, then we're just gonna skip this value and then go to the next iteration of the loop. But if it does show up, then we're gonna do our nested loop. Then we're gonna go through every single value starting at i plus one because we only wanna look at the values that come after the original value. And then we're checking which is the first value that's greater uh, than the value that we started at. If we find the next greater value, we're gonna get, first of all, get the index of the original value, and then we're gonna set the result equal to the next greater value and then break out of this loop because we're already done. But if this never executes and we never find the next greater element, then uh, the result will stay the same at that index. It'll stay as a negative one, the default value. So that works out for us. And then once this nested for loop is done, we'll just return the result. So that's the basic brute force solution. Now let's look at the more complex, more efficient one. So now let's look at the n plus m time solution. And I'm just gonna tell you straight off the bat that that this is going to take a stack to solve, but it's not super intuitive to know that it's going to need a stack, especially if you never solved this type of problem before, if you've never heard of the monotonic stack technique. But I'll try to explain the intuition of why. I changed the example a little bit though, because the original example doesn't really lead to the intuition of a stack, so I, that's why I changed the, the order of the values at least to this, because this will be a bit more interesting. So let's say we started at two. We know two shows up in the first array, so we want to find the next greater element of two. We look at the next value one. It's not greater than two, so it's not the next greater element. Then we look at the next value, three. It is greater than two, so we found the next greater element of two, and we can add it to the output. But hold on a second. If three is the next greater element of two, shouldn't it also be the next greater element of one? Well, that's only the case if one even shows up in the first array, which it does, but then that is the case. And that would be the case for any number of values. You know, suppose before the three and after the one, we had a zero over here. Then we'd say, well, one is not greater than two, and zero is also not greater than two. But when we finally reach the three, three is greater than all of them by definition because all the values that came after two before three, they were definitely not greater than two. That means they must be less than two because all the values in the input array are unique. So that means when we find the answer for two, we're also finding the answer for all the values in between. That's where the stack is gonna come in because we want to remember all of these values. In this case, of course, there's only two of them, but like I said, there could be a lot more. So how the solution is gonna go is we're gonna start at two, it's in num1, so what we're gonna do is add it to the stack. 
you're going to notice that this is going to be a one pass solution. We're not going to have nested for loops. Next, we're going to look at the value one. First of all, is it greater than any of the previous values that we need to find the next greater element for? Well, we're going to check that by taking a look at our stack. What's the top value on our stack? It's two. So one is not greater than that. So we didn't find the next greater element of two. But one does show up in N1, so we are going to add it to the stack because this is another value we need to find the next greater element for. Okay, and then we look at three and we're going to compare it to the top value of our stack. Notice how the stack is always going to be in decreasing order. It has to be because by definition, if we find a value like we just did now, we found a three and that's greater than the values here. So now what we're going to do is pop all of these values. What we're going to do is see three is greater than one. We found the next greater element of one. So what we're going to do is find the index of one. We're going to use the hash map that we talked about in the previous solution to do that. So we're going to say the next greater element of one is going to be three. And we're also going to pop this from the stack. And we're not going to stop there. We're not just going to check one value from the stack. This three could be greater than multiple values on the stack. So what we're going to do again is compare it to two. Is three greater than two? Yes, it is. So we're going to pop the two. We know that two shows up at this index. So we're going to add a three at that index. We found the next greater element of two. And now the stack is empty. So we can't keep, you know, popping values anymore. So we're done with that phase of the algorithm. Now, is it time for us to add three to the stack? No, because three does not show up in the first array. So we don't need to find the next greater element of three. So we're not going to add it to the stack. So now we're done looking at three. We're going to go to the next value four. We're going to add four to the stack. Then we're going to go to the next value after four. Well, there aren't any values after four. So the next greater element for four is just going to be negative one. So we're just going to add a negative one at that spot. So notice how we did that. And we did it with one pass through the input array. Now we are adding elements to the stack, but we're also uh, going to only be popping each element from the stack once. So the overall time complexity, yes, in this case is going to be M plus n. The space complexity is also going to be a uh, big O of m, one because of our hash map, which is going to be the size of the first array. Also, the stack is only going to be the size of the first array because we're only adding elements from the first array to the stack. So that's pretty much the whole solution. I really hope it makes sense. Now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code up the more efficient solution. You can see I have the original solution down here and we're gonna be starting this problem the same way that we did. We're gonna have that exact same hash map and initialize our result the exact same way. But in this case, we're also gonna have a stack, which initially is gonna be empty, just like the drawing explanation. And then we're gonna start iterating through every element in the second array, just like we did in the first solution. But where things are going to get a little bit different is we're going to look at the current value, which is just nums2 at index i, and we want to know if this is the next greater element for any previous values that could be on our stack. Now, initially our stack is empty, but later in the algorithm it could be non-empty. So in that case, if it was non-empty, we would want to know, well, is the stack non-empty? And is current greater than the top of our stack? The top of the stack you can get with negative one in Python, or you could take the length minus one. If this is the case, of course, we want to pop from our stack and we're going to pop the value. We know that current is the next greater element of this value. So we want to find the index of this value. Thankfully, we have our hash map to do that. So let's get the index of this value. And then we can set that uh, at that index, we can set the result, which is going to be cur because cur is the next greater value. So pretty straightforward. After that is done, the question is, does cur show up in the first array? If cur is in nums1 uh, index hash map, that means it shows up in the first array. That means we should add this to our stack. Now, if it doesn't show up, then of course we just won't add it to the stack because we don't need to. We don't need to find the next greater element of this stack or not of the stack of that value. 
Uh, but once that's done, that pretty much is the entire algorithm. We can go ahead and return the result and let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.